I'd like you to introduce Mr. Fraser Hines. Wow, a lovely crowd. What a lovely crowd. Arms. And a lovely sunny day. We've, uh, and they're all coming here as well. So I hope you can enjoy the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Fraser Hines. Oh, sit down. Stop it. <laughs> You never know what you're going to get. My next guest to talk to us today is, is a man who I think he's got to be one of the best doctors, hasn't he? Yeah. Yes. Um, an actor who seems to never be out of work. He's talented, he sings, he writes music, he's a filmmaker, he's an actor, he's a comedian, he's done absolutely everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peter Davison. I, 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 hello. I couldn't possibly live up to that billing, but thank you very, thank you very much. Where's my band? I feel like I want to break out into a rock anthem here. It's like a rock concert. Hi. Okay. Here's your, I love your TARDIS tie. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Have a seat. One. Yeah. Oh, incidentally, um, no, no taking of photographs during the panel for security reasons. Social security, I'm still signing on. Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Civil servants. Civil servants. Civil servants. Uh, well, please be civil. <laughs> right, as I, as I mentioned, I hope, hope these mics are picking us up. Yeah, they're going up, they're going to sort them out as we go. Um, as I mentioned at the start, um, these guys between them have just an incredible um, career on stage, television, film, you know, collectively between them. Um, and I was talking to, to Fraser last night, and, and I discovered, actually to my surprise, that Fraser and Peter have never actually worked together. They've kept us apart. Unless you can think... That's true, that's true. Yeah, it's amazing. It's astonishing. How is that possible? All these things. <laughs> We've done panels, obviously. Here in, in America and, and barking. Yeah. To, to, to barking. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was in LA last week and they said, oh, we're in LA last week. Why are they here? You were in LA last week? Oh, for Canada. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. I was in Roanoke, Virginia. Oh, really? Not quite as impressive as LA, really. Holiday or. Sorry, we're just talking um, about ourselves. Yes. <laughs> carry on, carry on. This, this, is, this is the way we roll. This is the way we roll. So, so, so Peter, what. what were you, a, were you a child actor? I know, I know you kind of started fairly early in your life, but what was the first thing that you ever did? No, I wasn't a child actor at all. No, I didn't go. I went to drama school at the age of 18, and uh, my first ever, funnily enough, my first ever TV appearance was in The Tomorrow People, which was, oh, yes. you know, I remember doing The Tomorrow People, and I was thinking, thank the Lord that they're never going to repeat this program. <laughs> It's never going to be seen again. And then they invented videotape and DVDs, and now it haunts me. Yeah. Um, it, it was just, it was it was great fun to do because it was a, it was a first uh, a comedy story that the Tomorrow People had done, which was a fairly serious uh, ch children's program, but fairly serious. And we did this uh, uh, um, three part, I think it was, and it was funny. Uh, and the and the people. You know, the, the uh, actors loved it, the producer loved it, the writer loved it, and we were going to be brought back, and then they, it went out on television, and the children hated it. And so we were dumped, unceremoniously. Um, but it was for the best, because then I got other jobs. So that was your very first... My first TV, TV appearance. Yeah. Absolutely but tomorrow. Amazing. So Fra Fraser, you, you kind of started a bit earlier than... Yeah, half past six in the morning. Half past six, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, started, I went to drama school when I was eight years old, and my first ever job was a film called John and Julie, and I was the 454th citizen, which it was a crowd scene, and of course we went to see the, fil the film in the cinema, and my, my mum and dad, oh yes, there you are, there. couldn't see me at all, it's just like trying to pick somebody out in the crowd here. Uh, and then I did some more crowd scenes, but the, the thing that sort of um, I'm very proud of, if I'm back home and some love is... I was talking. Well, Sir Lawrence Olivier said to me, and John Gilgood said to me, I said, well, well when Charlie Chaplin said to me, and they go, what? <laughs> and I, uh, I made a film with Charlie Chaplin called King in New York, and that wasn't a crowd scene. Uh, I had a couple of scenes with him. In fact, 
how brave you are, I think I was nine years old, I said to Mr. Chaplin, I've got an idea for some comedy. And instead of him going, clipping me around the ear going, I'm Charlie Chaplin. I've written, starring, produced, and directing this, and you're telling, he said, what is it, Fraser? And I suggested something. He said, well, if we use your idea there, and then my idea there, then we have the comedy. And that man was so great, he listened to a nine-year-old kid. Whereas a lot of people in our business, you'll agree, they get halfway up the, the run of success, and that's it. They, they, they stop listening. And I've always remembered Charlie Chaplin. If somebody comes to me in a pantomime, a little kid, a little baby, Mr. Hines, Fraser, Fraser, I've got a new gag. I'll listen to that gag. I'll probably go on stage and tell it, and it'll bring the house down. But you, you never stop listening. And I've always, that, I, I learned that from Charlie Chaplin. You never... That, that was one of the silent films, wasn't it, Fraser? It was not a silent film. <laughs> Why are you a... <laughs> no, it wasn't a silent movie. <laughs> it was a talkie. Just. And I had to sing, I had to sing opera. He said, can you, can you sing me When Stars Are Brightly Shining from Tosca? I went, no. <laughs> or you just sing whatever you think is, is operatic. So I did that. It's, it's on DVD, and I, I'm not plugging it because I don't get any royalties, but it's on DVD, that King in New York, Charlie Chaplin. So Peter's first... Um Attempt, well, attempt. <laughs> first, no, first appearance. No, actually, you're, you're dead right, David. It was an attempt. I'm dead. I'm dead. It was but, an attempt at no, uh, no. the American space cowboy. It was fantastic, it? but it was science fiction. Yes. So, so Fraser, your first science fiction was was X the Unknown. X the Unknown. Yeah, I think that was the first Hammer horror film directed by Leslie Norman, Barry Norman's dad. Again, I was playing a little sort of eleven-year-old Scots boy, and again, that, that's on, on DVD and. Uh, we were filming about three o'clock in the morning, and I have to say, Willie, I'll wait for five minutes, and then uh, you can come back. And on the take, I said, I'll wait five minutes, and this owl went, I went, make that three minutes. And <laughs> Leslie Norman fell off his chair laughing, the cameraman laughed, and instead of getting a, a bollocking, he, Leslie Norman said, that's a very funny ad -lib. we'll keep it in. Go for another take. Obviously, the owl will not hoot, but I'll dub something on later. So, uh, my first little ad lib, which um, was amazing. Wow. Film, the X Unknown. It's uh, with Dean Jagger, lovely man, the American actor called Dean Jagger. It's one of the first kind of Hammer horror films, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, I think uh, Quatermass was probably the. F I, I know that was a TV series, Quatermass. I think X Unknown was probably the first Hammer film with, with a, a very young um, Anthony Newley as well. Mm. Mm. So, Peter, you, you started out in kind of comedy science fiction. I mean, wh wh where did your career go from there? Did you... Downhill. No. Um, no. Uh, comedies, yes. I started off in comedy science fiction, and then um, I did um, a, a quite a big series called Love for Lydia for ITV. Um, uh, <clears throat> that um, was one of the most expensive things ITV ever did um, at, at the time, because it was all done on video, out on location. Um, and uh, it lasted, I think I was on it for about a year. Yeah. Uh, and then I moved on before I, that, that, that went out. I moved on to All Creatures Great and Small. Which and that was, was the thing that really kind that of... Was, I suppose you, that would be my breakthrough um, yes. part. Yeah. 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 So what so, was the thing you did with um, Patricia Hodge? Oh, that was, after, that was after All Creatures. That was Holding the Fort, comedy yes. series. Yes. I did a couple of comedy series. Yeah. Yeah. Holding, Holding the Fort was immediately before Doctor Who, pretty much. That, that, it was actually at the same, same time, time as Doctor Who. Yeah. At one point, I have to say... <laughs> It's never quite worked out this one well before. I was doing three television series at the same time. So I was doing a series called Sink or Swim at the BBC, yes. Holding the Fort and, uh, for ITV and, and Doctor Who for the BBC. Um, and, you, you know, organising ITV and BBC, Holding the Fort and Doctor Who was easy, mm. but organising the two shows within the, within the BBC was almost impossible. Just did, did he pay tax on them? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, actually, before I got love for Lydia, when I was out of work, I just, you know, started as an actor, I did a couple of things. I think after the Tomorrow People, I was out of work for a long period. So I got a, a part-time job in the tax office oh, at Twickenham. Wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> I used to go rooting through all those files you're not allowed to go through. In fact, I had to find, I can't tell you anything about them because I had to sign the official secrets oh. act. Oh, but Leslie Crowther, wow. <laughs> I'll give you a Chinese bird. <laughs> <laughs> so, so All Creatures, obviously, um, uh, primarily a location-based series? Was that... No, I would say primarily still it was studio. It was that strange mix between film and studio, but we did spend... It had a very high proportion of filming. Because mm. still... I think I always think of it as being like yeah, a location. Yeah, we had those great uh, locations, yes. Yeah. I said probably about 50, just under 50% was on, on, on location. Mm. And it was fantastic from... Uh, um, what a job. I'd never even heard, heard of the Yorkshire Dales. 
And then I drove up north thinking it was all going to be grimy black smoke and yeah. terrace houses. I know, terrible, isn't it? Uh, and there was the Yorkshire Dales, beautiful. Because, yeah. of course, Fraser, you were all up in Yorkshire for Emmerdale as well. Yeah, I, bought, I was born in Yorkshire uh, and lived in Harrogate, and then came back to, to England. <laughs> to England. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take your passport with you? Did, did they he's, let you back? He's still slightly <laughs> jet lagged, do you understand? <laughs> Been out in Gallifrey? Yes, I've been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are in Wales. No, yeah, we are in Wales. I know, yeah. We're well, somewhere like yeah. uh, And I lived in Chiswick and we did Doctor Who and the other stuff. And then I got Emmerdale and I used to commute every Friday night from Yorkshire TV uh, in Leeds back to Chiswick. And in those days, that's 972, 345, you can actually, two hours, to London. Nowadays, you, you couldn't do it. So um, then eventually I, I bought a house up in Yorkshire and then my mother moved back up to Yorkshire and uh, she, she, she lived you know, mm. near, nearby until she passed away. So, and I now stayed in Yorkshire. Mm. So do you, do you prefer kind of location work or kind of television work? Um, of the two? I, or I, studio work? I must say, I like the location because if it's cold, then you can actually, you don't have to act cold. You know, you're actually <laughs> cold. No acting required jobs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like those too, yeah. What, what is the worst, Peter? Pretending it's sunny when it's not, or <laughs> pretending it's, it's what, you know, wrapped up cold and it's really hot. And... Um, I d you know, I don't know, girl, you've you got the problem, haven't you? You, you sweaty, sw beads of sweat on your forehead when you're going, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it, it's, I think both are pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> See, why, do, why, does it why do they never get it right? Yeah. It is, you know, you're out there pretending it's sunny and you see goose pimples, people sunbathing. Yeah. So do you, do you prefer location or studio, Peter? Um, I prefer filming to those old multi-camera things. Right. Whether it's inside or not. I so I suppose, yeah, it would be location. Though. Yeah. You know, if you're on something that's all film, obviously, you, you know, it's not just outside. So multi-camera in that you will do like a whole scene and not have to stop for close-ups and all that kind of stuff. So you just well, what do, would happen in the, the in the old TV, well, like Doctor Who used yeah. to be shot like this, you would rehearse for 10 days mm -hmm. and then you'd go into the studio for a couple of days to record those scenes. So the advantage was you have had time to rehearse them but you're in that kind of rather static, static environment of multi-cameras yes. where you know, they just cut here, cut here, cut here. And it's, not, it's always a compromise. When it's filming, it's one camera. Sometimes there's a second camera, but it's maybe one camera. And they like that shot. It takes longer. Yes. And you have to do your rehearsal within the time it takes. Them it's to, rehearse, shoot, rehearse, yeah, rehearse, 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 shoot, rehearse, yeah. shoot. But it's still, I think, uh, uh, preferable. Mm. We, we shot ours, you know, from page one page 45 or page 50 in your day did you do all the TARDIS scenes first or did you shoot it as no as a, you, as a play no you you shot them uh, it seemed my uh, it's location my location so it will be the TARDIS scenes mm -hmm. first yeah all right because they could I think they just had to be to save on editing time presumably if they did your, your yes yeah, they were only allowed yeah. three edits yeah in my day <laughs> in your day <laughs> in the old days when he was in CP days of Charlie Chaplin <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> So, Peter, you mentioned you were you were kind of working on two other shows at the time you did Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, do, I mean, do you remember the, the day you got Doctor Who? I mean, oh, well, yes. I, how I did, did that kind of pan out then? Well, John Nathan Turner rang me up and, and, and very kindly offered me the job. <laughs> so did I, you go for a rehearsal? Oh, not rehearsal. No, no, or? no. I didn't have to go for an audition because I'd worked with John on uh, All Creatures Great and Small, and then he moved on to become the producer right. of Doctor Who. And I guess that I fitted the bill... I think he just wanted a complete change um, uh, uh, from the previous Doctors. I wasn't sure he was right. I mean, because I, I was the first Doctor who'd actually grown up watching the Doctor. Um, and it, in my brain, um, the Doctor was an older uh, figure. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my, my favorite Doctor would be Patrick Trout. Right. Um, yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, yay. <Okay. laughs> um, so when I was offered it, he rang me up and said, would you like, Tom's leaving, would you like to be the next doctor? <clears throat> I didn't accept it straight away, not because I thought, oh, it's not good enough. I just thought... How, how, how old were you around? I, was, I think I was, 20, I was 29. You were 29. You, you'd be the first kind of attractive leading man doctor, because all the others were... Yes, except I wasn't allowed to even put my arm around the companions. <laughs> And did not get to snog as he does now. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway. The... Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a such regrets. Um, uh, <laughs> that quote will be on Facebook in about three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. 
uh, I, he, I, he took me about, I think, three or four days to, to, to accept the part. Um, uh, and I really accepted it largely because I couldn't bear the idea, you know, if I passed on it, and then they, they cast somebody else, I really couldn't have gone around to everyone going, I was offered that. It's just yeah. not ethical. Yeah. So I thought, no, I'm going to have to do the part because I, was, I can't possibly not tell anyone I was offered it. Yeah. So it, it was great, great, very great honour to be offered. Fascinating. Yeah. So Fraser, how did how did you learn about your role in um, Doctor Who? My agent said you've got to go and see Innes Lloyd because uh, I'd worked with uh, Sean Sutton, who was the head of children's TV. I'd worked with three or four different shows: uh, the Silver Sword, Hunting Tower, Run to Earth, Cinderella, and I was part of his rep com TV rep com company. And I went to see Innes Lloyd. And, ah, hello, Davy, my hello, friend, sit down now. Now there's this part. Oh, God. <laughs> Excuse me, my phone's ringing. <laughs> It's just, it's, he's been offered another part. Another job. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm, I'm actually on stage at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was it was on television the other day. Hello, hello. I bet. I, well, it's going quite well until you ran. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I, I think I better ring off. <laughs> Anything exciting? No, no, jo no job offers, no, no. <laughs> All right, okay. Oh, dear, okay, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> Did you give him the shopping list? Yeah. Did you ever get a pound of onions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Steven Spielberg. He's got no idea what time it is over here, has he? <laughs> Uh, yes. Oh, in anyway. It, yeah, in it. So he said, no, there's a part of Jamie McCrimmon, uh, uh, Scottish Highland, and Sean Sutton said you can do a Scottish accent, so uh, you fancy doing it? I went, do you want me to read? No, 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 no reading, no. Do you want to do it? It's just four episodes. Yeah, so I, so I did it, and we, we did all the filming first at French and Ponds, and then after about the second episode had gone out. French and Ponds. Yeah. <laughs> so my fun. Yeah, well, I think we did some there as well. Yeah, nothing, nothing changes. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, that French and Ponds, the BBC used it for Germany, yeah. London, <laughs> Russia, it's everything. Well, what did you do at French and Ponds, Peter? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, you got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely filmed at French and Ponds, yeah? yes. It was one of those places like Black Park, yeah. uh, um, just outside of London, everything. where you used it for everything. Yeah. Even though it was on the flight path, it used to amaze me. We, we did um, Doctor Who there, and there was a plane going over every two minutes. Or something. Mad. <laughs> Sorry, Fraser. Commercial <laughs> break. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, uh, and so after about episode two had gone out with the Highlanders, you know, Innes put his arm around him. Ah, Fraser, how do you fancy joining the old TARDIS crew for a year or so? Uh, I said, I, I can't, Innes, because I've, I've filmed Waving Goodbye to Patrick and Polly and Ben, and I'm left in the Culloden with my Laird and, and Kirsty, played by Hannah Gordon. He went, oh, no, hell with that. No, we all saw that out. Uh, two days later, I went to French and Ponds, and this time they filmed me getting into the TARDIS and waving goodbye, and... That, was, that began three of the happiest years of my career. Mm. Mm. Awesome. With lovely Patrick. Yes, look at the size of that thing, Doctor. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, PC, I think you were in Doctor for three years. As well. I did three seasons. Three seasons, yeah. So, how was that as an experience? Or were you just so overloaded with other work and no you know I, I mean after a while the the comedy series ended yes. and then i was just doing doctor who um i did have a nice little thing going with uh, yorkshire bitter actually i did a little thing for a beer commercial with yorkshire bitter and i i filmed one and it was meant to go on for two years uh, with quite substantial remuneration um and then they had they maybe given up because it wasn't a, a, it wasn't compatible with doctor couldn't be seen uh, doctor enjoying who, the beer yeah, yeah. I can see the doctor walking around with a pint of Yorkshire bitter in his hand. Um, anyway, no, I, I, in fact, it was Patrick Troughton who said to me, do three years. Mm -hmm. I have this story, and it's absolutely true. I met him at the car park at BBC. And the great thing about if you're the doctor is they used to let you park in that horseshoe car park in front of the BBC. Right. But, of course, it only lasts as long as you're the doctor. <laughs> and so I had just got in to the horseshoe car park. And Patrick, poor Patrick, had just been turned away. Because <laughs> you always try it on, you know, and if, maybe you, there's a chance you'll get in. But I just parked my car there, and I saw Patrick, and I oh, sorry. <laughs> that was the commissioner, Vic, who only had one arm. That's right, Vic. Oh, well, he, Vic was quite good. He Vic only had one arm. Yes. Yes. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I got a little with Eric Morecambe. Uh, they were rehearsing, and we, we, he drove into the centre. And Vic went, ah, Mr. Morecambe, Mr. Morecambe, come this way, Mr. Morecambe. That's, you know, part of the Rolls-Royce. 
He said, Mr. Morecambe, you're, you're recording your Christmas special uh, tonight. He said, that's right, yes, yes, that's right, sunshine. He said, um, <laughs> <laughs> do it properly. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and he said, um, uh, any chance of a couple of tickets for tonight's show? Uh, he said, uh, your wife can have a ticket, but you can't. He said, why? He said, well, you can't clap. <laughs> Anyway, Patrick said do it for three years and, and, and move on. Did you ever work with Patrick? Yes, he, he was in All Creatures Great and Small. He played oh, a character in All Creatures Great and Small. Oh, right. And, and yeah, so I think he was in a couple of episodes, that's all. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That must have been great fun. It was, yeah. yeah because I guess course, you had a lot of guest stars coming in. Yeah, that we show. did. But of course, as I said, he was, he was kind of my doctor, so yeah. that was my moment of, wow. And then bizarrely, you're David Tennant's doctor. Yes, that's right. It's, it's, way, it's weird the way the world it's works. It's kind of strange, isn't yes. it? <laughs> yes, um, uh, um, because what, I think what happened, you know, um, I, I was sort of, I like to think I set a trend. You know, when I was, when I was cast, I thought, oh, I'm a bit too young for this. But now, looking back from where we are today, um, I don't seem out of place no, as I did at the time. No. And of course, the, the thing about it, having a younger doctor is all those young sort of boys growing up look at the, look at the doctor and go yes that's just like me I could be just like you yeah. so in a way that I think that's the thought process behind casting younger doctors yeah. now yeah. Um, and of course uh, um, I was David I was David's doctor he then became Doctor Who uh, um, we have the Doctor Who fans who were around when uh, during the time of the classic doctors they're all running the show so it's a sort of self-perpetuating yeah. So when you were asked back to do that little kind of time crash episode, yeah. or whatever it was called, I mean... Time crash, yeah. What was it called, time crash? Time crash. Yeah. yeah. That must have been a bit strange, perhaps, or was it like coming home? Well, that, it was, no, it wasn't like coming home at all. I mean, when uh, um, Stephen Moffat, uh, I met Stephen Moffat, and he said, would you, you know, I'm, I've written this thing, would you, would you like to do it? And I said, yeah, certainly, because it, it, it seemed to me that... I was slightly worried about the fact, I think we'd just been redesignated the classic series yeah. to separate us from the new series. Um, so I felt it would be a good way of connecting the two. Um, uh, uh, and so I said yes, and we drove down, I drove down after the show in the West End on a Saturday night to Wales, where it was recorded. Where well, we are, we're in Wales, aren't we? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> um, and uh, we just recorded it in the, in the morning. Yeah. And um, it, it was it didn't feel like my set, so it, you know it wasn't like coming. It's a very home different exactly. Tardis, wasn't you know, it? Very. In those set. days, the Tardis was a, um, just a set that was moved in for the fil uh, filming of every two weeks, and this was a, a, what you call a standing set. Yes. You know, it, was, it, was it was like a a constantly yeah. in, in the building. Yeah. Um, so it took a bit of time getting used to it, but I, 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 it was great fun. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. And you've also, got, of course, got. Of course, David is now your son-in-law. Son <laughs> yes, it gets weirder and weirder. Um, it gets yeah. very strange. There was a moment um, when they got married when I, I, I was doing the father of the bride speech, a nerve-wracking uh, thing to do, where I sort of went down the road of <clears throat> explaining to people how they'd met. And, and as I moved along, I realised that as um, Georgia was my daughter... Uh, I was the doctor. David is the same person as me that my daughter had actually married her father. <laughs> I thought it was best to stop there. <laughs> Have you got another daughter for me? <laughs> no, but she has. I've got Yes, it might be a... You might have to be a bit of a sugar daddy because I think you're going to be a little old, but she's... I, I think so, yeah. Age. <laughs> but, because I've worked, yes, I've worked with Georgie in uh, The Big Finish. Oh, did you know what yeah, Yes, um, it wasn't Telecom. The Glorious Revolution, I think it was. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. 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 She's yeah. a good little actress. She is. Very good, yes. She's very good. She's busy having children at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew they had one child. Is, is there another one? Uh, of mine? No, no, of George's. Oh, yeah, well, there's another one on the way. Is there? Yes. Oh, is that hot news? I don't know. Yeah, no, I think it's probably out there in, in the... Um, in the sci-fi community, I don't know. Well, Did anyone know that she was having another, another future doctor? Yeah. <laughs>
It's like it's going to be like a dynasty. It is yeah. keeping the family. Yes. You know, I, I I liken it to the sort of Kim Jong Il thing in North Korea. <laughs> you know, the child is the automatic successor. I'm sorry, all the other actors out there, but I'm, the job is taken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Going, all, all creatures. Did you have to do all the medical stuff like I have to do on Emmerdale? Oh, you mean like the, the um, yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, oh yes, we had to do that. In fact, they made a T-shirt with a, a, a sort of cartoon of, of one of us, a vet, with his arm up the cow like that. Uh, and um, I couldn't believe it when they said, well, you're going you're to have to do this, because that's what vets do. It is, incidentally, what vets do all the time. I, it seemed to me that even if they were diagnosing, I don't know, a, a stomach upset or if they were diagnosing a throat problem with the cow, the first thing they do is arm up the cow. <laughs> it's almost like it's instinctive, you know, you just arrive on the farm, up, better put the arm up the cow. Yeah. Uh, and um, I remember the first time I had to do it, and it was almost like, I imagine an executioner, you think, oh my lord. In just, in just half an hour, I'm going to have my arm up a cow. In just 15 minutes, I'm going to have my arm up a cow. Five minutes! And then suddenly you're there, and the only thing I was thinking was, actually, this is the only warm part of my body. <laughs> <laughs> we, it, it ever did, we had a try it. I mean, it we had an Arab cameraman who was lovely, but you, you would never accept the first take. Always, always, I do, do second take, and that was sunny, shining, nice and bright. And we were filming one day, and the farmer came up and said, listen to, to David Green, the director, Daisy's about to carve, why don't you get Fraser and Freddie Pine to play back? Film it and do, do the carving, and Mustafa film. Good Gen idea. Genuine carving. A genuine carving. So we dashed in, Mustafa had his camera there, we got the bailer twine round, and little hooves came out, and we were pulling and pulling, and the calf <laughs> came out, and a bit more, and you were a bit more, landed on the ground, we cleaned it all up, got it breathing, <laughs> yeah, and cut, David's cut, marvellous, marvellous. Mustafa, he said, I'd like to do one more. <laughs> <laughs> and so the prop guys, without back, said, shove the bugger back, and they pick the car back. <laughs> and he, oh no, I cannot do one more thing, can I? <laughs> <laughs> shove the bugger back. It's quite hard work, actually, isn't it? So you have to actually put the circle, well, we did anyway, when we did the carving, you have to put the rope around the leg to yes. go in, put the little loop around the leg, and then you have to pull this poor little calf. His leg, and right? if his shoulder gets caught, then you've got to push it back in. It, it, it just comes out, and then no, you've got to go back in again. To get the shoulder straight, because it has to come out as a, uh, Tom Daly, you know, diving. <laughs> so you, you, you did a genuine carving as well? Yes, oh yes, we did, yeah. yeah. And we did a great, we did a, um, a, a great scene with a foal being born as well, which is oh. extraordinary. Uh, and uh, everyone on the film unit was just sort of mesmerized by the sort of mm. nature. Uh, um, and the you know the foal was sort of starting to get up, and we thought we had two children playing James Harriet's children, and we thought get them down because they'd just be so amazed by this. So we got them down onto the set, and they walked in, looked at the little foal, beautiful foal, and the mother, and went, "You yuck! <laughs> <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> That's awful." But nature designed a mare so badly because the others are down like that. And the leg is like that. And the fold is born. He staggers up and he sniffs round. He's got to twist his little head and go like and start suckling straight away. Even on sideways, he goes straight on. And because I breed horses, at home, and you see this little fold sniffling, and, and he's no good. And he has to twist round and, and get the milk. So difficult. What was God thinking? Extraordinary. <laughs> I wonder who was the first guy that ever drank cow's milk. Oh, there's an animal there. I'm going to pull those others and drink the milk. Who was the first Something like that. Why do you yeah. Gross, yeah. <laughs> you don't drink horse's milk. Why not? We eat horse meat now. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we don't want to, we eat horse meat now. <laughs> I had horse meat last night. I could tell it was horse meat. The jockey kept nicking my chips. <laughs> uh, have you got a little book, Fraser? You write a, like a Tony Blackburn book. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not so little, Peter. <laughs> We we oh, did a signing can in. Can I just say one one. thing? Steal it from him. <laughs> yeah. We did a signing barking one. You said, "Oh God!" It's the first time we ever done signing. You know, oh God, Fraser, you're not going to start telling us awful corny jokes. I said, "No." All right. After about an hour, he said, "Oh, Fraser, tell us a joke." <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, what, what's one of uh, Peter? One of your your favourite memories from um, Doctor Who? 
If favorite a favorite memory, memory Doctor that Who. stays with you. Oh, heavens. I don't know. I, my, they're, they're not really favorite at the time. In fact, they were the sort of nightmare thing. You know, like well, nightmare holidays. Nightmares are good. But, um, you know, we used to be in, uh, uh, in those days in the BBC, they used to stop filming at precisely 10 o'clock. They just, they'd either turn, depending on who was causing trouble in the union, so it would either be the VT people who just switched the machines off, or the lighting people who just switched the lights down. So you're always in, in desperate panic. And I remember um, on two or three occasions, one particular occasion where we had a very, I think a climactic scene of one of the episodes, um, and we'd rehearsed it for two weeks in this particular set, and it was it worked fine, but then it got to about five to ten, and they had no time to light the new set. So they just said, go into this set. And, and, and the, the floor manager said, just, just, just go on, just go on and start acting. And so we literally had to go on. I think it, it wasn't a side man, it was some, I can't remember who it was now. But I just remember going, okay, we're here and this is just like live television. <laughs> and it's going to look like rubbish. I was going to say much worse than that. Uh, uh, um, and of course it was actually quite thrilling. Because you were waiting for the red light to come on uh, uh, when the camera got to you, and then you said your line, and then the other person had to wait for the red light. And we were just making it up as we went along. And it was, it was kind of, the, I guess, the excitement you get from live television, yes. but you kind of knew it was going to look pretty terrible. Um, because, it, it, you know, unfortunately, a lot of live television did look pretty terrible. Um, what was the story? I, I, I can't, you know, I just, it, was, it was directed by... Everybody wants to. I know they do. I know they do. I'm going to have to look it up now. It was directed by a, 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 a woman director, not Fiona Cumming. Um, Paddy Russell? No, no. It was. Uh, you'll have to look it up, guys. I can't remember. I can't remember who, who it was. Now. Terrible, isn't it? Uh, or just just watch all the episodes again and decide which one was worst, and then you'll go back. That's probably the scene. <laughs> um, but it happened on two or three occasions where they would just we'd have no time to. And the camera would have no time for us. So they were simply moving those huge great cameras around and trying to find a shot. Yeah. And then the red light would go on, and then you. Kind of and move. of course, you, you couldn't even do it the next evening because the sets would be strapped back. No, no, the well. sets were You'd have to have a, a remount, and that would have cost lots of money. Uh, and the show in those days, as opposed to today, that's the biggest difference. Today, today the programme is um, a BBC prestigious, it's, a, it's a, a top of the range, really. It's what they lead there seasons with. Uh, um, in those days, it was a kind of workhorse. Yes. Earned the BBC loads of money, sold to 39 countries, but we've had budgets cut every every year. Yeah. To do, do more and more for yeah. less than less. to do more and more, more for less than less. Yeah. yeah. But yourself, Fraser, have you got a favourite memory? I think one of the, yeah, we, we, Patrick and I had worked together, obviously, for three years, then we, we went our separate ways. We met now and again to play golf, but then when we came back to do the, the two doctors, um, I, my opening line in The Two Doctors was, look at the size of that space station doctor. You know? And I changed it to look at the size of that thing, doctor. And John Nathan Turner went, no, 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 the, the rehearsal, no, no, no. It says, look at the size, and Patrick said, no, 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 at the beginning of every story, Jamie always says, look at the size of that thing, doctor. And I go, yes, Jamie, it is a big one, isn't it? Peter, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna... Offer you one of those. Look at the size of that thing, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Where exactly should I pin it, Fraser? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But it, 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 because that was it. We, we tried to sneak that in. It, it, it started off as a Dalek story when we saw the Emperor Dalek. You know, this huge Dalek. And my line was, "Look at the balls on that thing, Doctor." <laughs> I couldn't say it. You know, we kept laughing, so we changed it to look at the size. Yes, Jamie, it was a big. And then in the. the, the, the the uh, T-Mat story, the um, Seeds of Death. Seeds of Death, when, we, when the TARDIS lands in the museum, on the take, you know, I walked in and saw this lovely ro rocky ship. Look at the size of that thing. Going, yes, Jamie, it is rather big. And it, we... Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, you just, oh, you your face has got a call now. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, I think it might be me calling you. <laughs> Emma. Uh, yeah, I'm on stage at the moment. I don't know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> Could you say hello, Emma? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll call you later. <laughs> Don't call me at work again. <laughs> it's, my, it's my turn next. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh.
Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so Fraser, you, you mentioned you know Doctor Who was like you know the ha- one of the happiest times yeah. that you'd ever spent. Mm. So w- when you came to kind of the end of that, I mean, how, how did that come about? We didn't want to, did to leave, but Patrick's wife was saying, "Oh, for goodness' sake, it's a children's TV show." It was five fifteen on a Saturday. Children, you should. You're a better actor, better, better actor. And my agent was saying, "No, darling, you've done three years television. I want you to get get you back into film." So three, uh, I don't want to leave. We don't want to. We didn't want to leave, and um, we we had to, you know, and. And I would say, if I'd known Leela was going to join the TARDIS, you know, I'd never left, you know. I was his vision, you see, because Leela and Jamie were the only two that carried knives. We were the only two companions to be armed. And I could just see, you know, the doctor, you, the water's rising, he's tied up to his post, and I'm going to cut him free, and Leela's and I will cut him free with my knife. And the two of us end up wrestling on the floor, you know. <laughs> Who's going to free the doctor, you know? Uh, sorry, I'm cold shot. That was a dream you had. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you know, I was saying, you know, if it wasn't for those two women nagging us, you know. But you all kind of agreed to leave at the same time. Yeah, and then you went to Padme and said, oh, I'm going to leave with you two guys. I'm going to leave because I'll never, if it's John Pertwee, I'll, I'll never get into close up because close up his face, top of my head. Close up yeah. my face, his crutch. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, so she had us left as well. So, so what was the kind of the mood like at, at the end of all of that? Oh, the war games, it was very, you know, it was coming to the end of the, a long time and we were very, you know, we, we did, as I say, it was very sad for us and it was, it was, you know, no acting required when we were actually saying goodbye to each other, even though we'd rehearsed, you know, for, for a week in the studios. You know, always thinking you rehearse it and then it comes to the red light coming on and the group gulp, you know, we thought that's it, well, we'll never see each other again. And we were happy, had such a happy time. People said, oh, wasn't Patrick getting miserable towards the end and upset? And wasn't it hard work? I, I remember shooting a few episodes, going on holiday for about four weeks in the summer, a few more episodes, Christmas off, a few more episodes, summer holiday. I didn't feel, did you ever feel it was kind of treadmill hard work? Not really, but then we're whingers basically, aren't we? So we kind of, <laughs> our definition of hard work is really not quite the same as other people's definition of hard work, if we're honest. Yes. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, 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 I listened with, uh, to somebody, one of those actors at one of those awards things recently saying, oh, I thought it was a very, you know, doing this part was very brave. I thought, no, it's not. <laughs> We're not brave at all. <laughs> and we, t- we kind of get things slightly out of proportion about hard work. But, you know, I suppose, you know, there, are mo- there are moments, aren't there, in those long studio days where you think, yeah. oh, yeah. you know, this is yeah. been really... But then, as you say, we go off on holiday for four weeks and recover nicely, thank you. Hard work is pushing, pulling out washers, yeah. a thousand washers yeah. an hour or something, or going down a street that could be mine. You know, that's, that's brave. That's it? brave. Yeah. So you mentioned, Peter, that you kind of decided almost at the start that you were going to do three years. Yes. Um, I mean, was there a point at which you thought maybe I could do more, or were you ready to go? Well, well, well when, I, when I had to make the decision, which was weirdly at the end of the second season, um, about um, what, what to do, there was a moment where I thought, well, maybe, why, why couldn't I just do four? But... Well, I knew that when I made the decision to actually leave, that I, I just felt in my head that it was the right thing to do. Right. You know. There's always that moment when you do the last story uh, um, and you actually hand over to the next doctor. There is always, that's always very difficult. Even if you've made the decision to leave and go, I'm, I really want to move on. And I even had um, another job in the offing. It was still, you know, you see this outrageous imposter, Colin Baker. <laughs> dressed in my costume, lying on the floor and that, and you think, oh, why did I do that? Why have I left? And, I, and, and it's just one of those things that it's, it's fine, but, you know, it, it is, you do kind of feel it's your, yes. it becomes yours, and maybe they should just cancel it when you leave. <laughs> but I think you think that this could be, why am I writing myself out of work? Well, you know? yes, no, exactly. This could be the last job I'm yeah. ever going to do, you know. Mm. But isn't, isn't that the case with, like, every series that runs, uh, you know, for, for a length of time? I mean, if, if they, you know, redid Creatures Now or something, yes. you'd feel, oh, that was my role, you know. It's, um, was well, I did, you know. <laughs> Or if they redid Emmerdale, <laughs> no, they brought Joseph Cotton right. back in Emmerdale and it wasn't played by you. They got some other actor in to do it. So there's a kind of like a proprietorial... Yes, yeah, no, there is very definitely a proprietorial it. thing, yes. And it's, just, no, it's just inevitable, even if you know... Practically speaking, A, you'd be too old to play the part again, or you wish you wouldn't want to do it anyway because you've done it. You still kind of go, hmm, it's mine, really. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, did, did you enjoy Doctor Who then, Peter? Was it, was it fun <clears throat> and fulfilling? Oh, yes. or? It, was, it was enormous fun to make. 
Uh, and I was slightly frustrated by the fact that um, we used to rehearse it at what they called the Acton Rehearsal Rooms, the Acton Hill. Yeah. Um, and um, every two or three weeks, I would see uh, um, people, of, actors of my age, uh, um, peers of mine coming in and doing different parts and different things. And I was still there being the doctor. So I, I did, because I was, I guess I was young, and I was, I was doing quite well. I did, I was getting itchy feet about moving on and doing other things. So for some reason, we, you know, we, we don't like, we don't like to stay in a job too long, do we? It's kind of instinctive, instinctive thing. I don't know where it's come from, really, because um, <clears throat> quite often in America they stay for longer in, in these things. They're required to by contracts, but um, we have this thing, I go, can I do this for a certain amount of time, and then I'm going to have to move on to something else. I don't quite know why we've got it, but other people carry on doing the same job for, you know, their entire whole, whole life. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's a, there's a thing fixed in our head. So I, I got itchy feet, but I enjoyed it immensely. It was fun, and we had, you know, I made friends, uh, um, and uh, and I don't obviously re regret doing it at all. But I also don't regret moving on. No. Did, what did you move on to? What did you I did a, first of all. I did a, a BBC series called. Anna of the Five Towns, a BBC Two classic series, and I did a very peculiar practice and Which was um, another big thing for you, campion. Yeah. And like that. I love so. so, Fraser, where did you? What happened to you after Doctor? Uh, I went to, well. My agent got me two films: uh, Zeppelin, which they seem to show every sort of August bank holiday, of playing a German World War One radio operator, and then I did a film called The Last Valley with Michael Caine and Omar Sharif. Um, then. I went into Emma, into Emmerdale, Emmerdale Farm as it was, just for a year, you know, it was 12 episodes, uh, 13 episodes, that was it. Then we got another 13 episodes, and then another 13 episodes, and suddenly it was, <laughs> it was like a, a year, and then they said, do you want to sign for another year? Yeah, well, we're having good fun, it's Yorkshire, I love being in Yorkshire, it, uh, Yorkshire Dales, nice weather, and I just, you just kept signing for another year, and, I, and then you know, what, I've done 11 years. So I got married, and, and went off, and... Uh, I mean, coming a little bit, we've got about 15 minutes left, um, so sort of bringing things a little bit more up to date, we talk a little bit, Peter, about some of the stage work that you've done. Uh, <laughs> and I think I've, I've got in mind something particular that hopefully the guys here will, will know, um, Spamalot. Oh, yes, Spamalot. <laughs> I loved doing Spamalot. It was fantastic. The best thing about Spamalot was they said, um, my, my agent rang up and said, oh, they want you to audition for Spamalot. I said, oh, great. Well, fine. I said, I've got to obviously learn, learn a song and things like that. So did you know Monty Python before? Oh, oh yes, absolutely. No, I was brought up with Monty Python. So, uh, um, and they, then he said, um, but they're going to have to fly you to New York for the audition because the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the director wouldn't come over to Britain because um, it started on Broadway. Yeah. So they flew me over there and um, uh, I went up on the stage and uh, I, I got one line into the song and I forgot it. And I, know, I think this is why I got the part, because it, instinctively, I wasn't deliberate. I just went, if you know Monty Python, you know what this means. I, I just, I, I made a mistake and I went wrong and I went, oh, bugger. <laughs> and the director just started laughing. And I, feel, I think, actually, then I did the rest of the audition, but I think actually it was just the old bugger that got me the part. It was just, you know, the end of uh, the Spanish Inquisition uh, uh, episode. Yes. When the screen goes black, they don't quite get it. He goes, oh, bugger, bugger. So had you had you sung on stage before? Um, I had. I, I was in. I did Chicago oh. uh, uh, in the uh, late nineties, and I had always sung. I, you know, I play the guitar and sing a bit. And you're, uh, you're very musical, aren't you? And you I'm fairly. Nice. That's very nice of you to put it like that. Yes, I think I'm sort of <laughs> moderately musical. I play. I play a lot of things a bit, yes. and I put songs together in my little studio at home. Officer McGurk. What? One of your songs you wrote, Officer McGurk. Oh, Officer McGurk, that's right, I used to do that at conventions, yes, you're absolutely right. Yes. And um, I, I wrote the theme tune for Button Moon once too. Yes, right on. <laughs> As we have the Button Moon fan club in today. <laughs> anyway, so, um, and it, they, were, they were very nice, easy songs. And it was just a fantastic, it was, it was the closest I'll ever get to being part of the Monty Python team. Nice, um, because it just, and Eric Idle was there, you know, he turned up and yes. sort of said, Fantastic, and so it, um, it was great, enormous fun. So it ran for quite a long time, didn't it? It ran, oh gosh, yes, a long time. But now he's yeah. come back again in a different, slightly different yes. form. Yeah. 
Um, but I think it's not the same production. It's mm. still spanner. But these things kind of reinvent them. Yes, yes they, they do. The yeah, no, no, it's great. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, so I discovered uh, West End musicals fairly late on in my career. Does I, think you did. I, I did that? Legally Blonde. Legally Blonde. Yes. yes. I played the horrible professor. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's good. awesome. And Fraser, you, you did a tour, was it last year? Um, yeah, year before, uh, yeah, with uh, Kate Omar, actually. Um, not the unexpected, no, the uh, unexpected guest, yes. Uh, and she was lovely. She, I was playing the inspector, so you don't go on stage for about 45 minutes, which is... What it's was the show called? Hmm? What was the show called? Uh, the unexpected guest. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Agatha Christie. <laughs> and... Um, no, that was a hollow, so the hollow was with Kate Amara. And she was great to work with, but she had a scene where she had to go on stage. I'm an inspector backstage, waiting to go on. She, and she has a little bag of jelly babies. Nothing to do with Doctor Who, but she, And I said, oh, let's have a jelly baby. No, these are my props. Oh, they, no, you're not my props. And she walked on stage. So the next night, I got a tea towel, dark glasses, and I got a gun off the prop table, borrowed a jelly baby. And as she's about to walk on stage, I came out of the, the shadows. Give me a jelly baby or he gets it now. <laughs> And she had to go on stage and laughing she went on stage. and then the last night of the show uh, she went to the prop table and there was this empty bag and it just said stolen by the jelly baby thing <laughs> where are you 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 where um, where uh, uh, we had this scene where we, we had to, uh, I, I was just one of the sort of, the, the general sort of uh, musketeers, and we had this thing where you had to stand up and say, um, to uh, the king, and um, uh, the, 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 the guys went to stand up and say, I recognize no king but the cardinal. Uh, and so one day we all stood up and went, the queen! <laughs> and he had to say, I recognize no queen but the cardinal. <laughs> it, was, it was even funnier because of the sexual orientation of the man um, playing the cardinal. <laughs> oh, that is fun. That is fun. Pantomimes. I do pantomimes every year. Yes. And I love getting the kids on the stage because they will tell you their innermost secrets. And one little girl, I said, what's your name? Geraldine. I said, oh, who are you with? Oh, Mummy and Uncle George. Oh, Who's Uncle George? Oh, he's a nice man that comes to stay when Daddy's away driving his lorry. <laughs> Mummy, why are you sliding into your seat? And this woman's... Uh... Do we have a spotlight on Uncle George, please? <laughs> have you done Panto, Peter? Oh, yes. I've given up now because I, I, I used to love playing those sort of buttons, wishy-washy things so much. Once you get too old for that, you've really got nothing else but... You know, either Dame or Baron Hard up and uh, So you don't fancy doing the Dame, either of you? Too many costume changes. Uh, I hate costume changes. Yeah. That's why I love Doctor Who so much. No costume changes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I have done... Uh, and I love that bit where you get the kids up on stage. Right? They're, they're fun, <laughs> pantomimes, and yes. um, baffling, of course, to, to American people. Because when we first did it... We first did my first pantomime, we did under the auspices of Doctor Who. It was actually directed by John Nathan Turner. That was a Cinderella, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and we had um, uh, Anthony Ainley um, mm. was playing Baron Harder. And, um, uh, and of course, it, we had hundreds of uh, uh, visitors from America, Doctor Who fans, yes. who didn't know what the heck was going on. They just thought, <laughs> what is this? Why is Because it's very traditional. It was very traditional, so we had a, a, a woman you know, playing like like a man, and, and a man playing, yeah, a, man woman. playing a woman there. They have no idea. <laughs> you can't explain to them. They, they say, why are, you miming, why are you miming in your pants? No, it's not. They think you're miming in your pants. No, it's pantomime. Yeah, you're miming in your pants. No. <laughs> you say you cannot explain it. Uh, oh, another, uh, another little girl, that high, red hair, red velvet dress, drip white socks, little Alice band. Did you enjoy the show tonight? Very much so. Uh, did you come with your mum and dad? I came with my mother and father, that's what you mean. <laughs> so, w when you saw the nasty man, did you think nasty man? No, I didn't. Well, did you think horrible man? No, I didn't. Well, when, when he came, what did you think? She thought, I thought, oh, bastard. <laughs> and she was that high. She was that high. Obviously, she said her mother, you know, George, you're a bastard, you're still in the lavatory, come out, you know. This little girl, butter wooden mouth. Melt in her mouth. You're very, you're very good with the children on, on stage in pantomime. Anyone here seen Fraser in pantomime? 
No. No? no. Oh, you have to rectify that. I haven't done one in Wales, you see. You haven't done one in Wales, no. 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 We'll have to sort that out. No, we'll sort that out. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I, I, I love getting, because instead of just saying, what's your name, how old are you, I try and get yeah. there. Did you drive here today? Who drove? Who, Dad? You, are you married? Yeah, 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 you're married. <laughs> Is Dad a good driver? No, they had an argument on the way here, because Dad went through a red light. You know, oh, <laughs> I tell you everything. Oh, it's fantastic. I think we've only got um, a couple of minutes left, guys, so um, we, we could have talked to our nice guests for, for so much longer. You, you've both done a lot of work on uh, Big Finish, of course, mm. um, in, in recent years. So, I mean, Peter, just obviously Big Finish, I think I'm right in saying there's more Big Finish Doctor Who's than you did on television. You know, you might be, you might be right. I don't know. Yeah, I've done quite a lot of them. Yeah, awful awful lot. Lot. I sort of lost touch. What, what's the experience of kind of recreating the Doctor on, on audio? You, you, just, you just kind of do it. I don't think I even tr try to recreate anything. I, I, you know, it's sort of, I'm, I'm older, so it's, it's not quite the same. You're not old. Um, uh, He's not old, is he? A couple of months, you know. Uh, um, but it, uh, you just, we just go in there, and when you're with, you, you know, companions, Sarah, Janet, whoever, um, Mark, it's, it's just, it all sort of comes back to you. It's kind of slipping into the old familiar... The, the really sad thing, of course, is when you're in, in the middle of the, the action bits, in your head, you ask, I am still that sort of 31-year-old... Uh, running, you know, yeah, running down corridors. Yeah. And I'm really kind of got it, the, the whole picture of myself in the head, then you go up, set, out, out of the booth, and you catch a sight of yourself in the mirror. As you as you're leaving, you go, oh, no, no. I haven't turned back time, sadly. So they have, they have mirrors outside the booth so you can check your makeup before you go. <laughs> <on. laughs> no, I think it's actually just gore reflection of the glass doors. Oh. But um, no, sadly. Oh, of course, I do put on the full outfit when I'm doing that. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Fraser, what's yeah, your I experience? Just, you, know, you, you get in the booth and suddenly there's a script and you, you, my voice goes up three octaves. Oh, doctor, look out! Yeah, there's a monster. Go, yeah, go, run, run! Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Suddenly, you're there. Yeah, you don't have to grip anything to make your <laughs> voice go up. You know. It just automatically goes, and you're running down the, the corridor. Ah, yes, great, great, doctor. Yeah, and then you, and you see, you look at yourself, and uh, this old man running. <laughs> what am I? What am I doing? Uh, but, it, I, but I love doing. I love doing the big finish things, and you know, uh, I always say to people, I get paid to do Jamie, but I do Patrick for the love of the man because um, it's my little homage, keeping his. In memory of life for the fans. Oh, yeah, that's that's fantastic. Fantastic. I love it. <laughs> and, on that, and on that note, I'd like you to all please put your hands together for uh, Mr. Fraser Hines. <laughs> and of course, the incomparable Mr. Peter Davison.